Welcome to the Engineering Influence Podcast presented by the American Council of Engineering Companies. The COVID-19 pandemic put a lot of strain on firms and their employees. With everyone working remotely, the ties that bind the firm together could start to fray. Firms found many ways to deal with this challenge, and today we're talking with Florence Sterling, president of DB Sterling Consultants in Chicago, about the changes her firm undertook, how they worked, and what she's learned looking to, towards the future. So Florence, the pandemic hits, everyone's trying to figure out what to do to keep their firm productive and together. What did your firm do? Well, it was ironic that we were prepared probably a little bit more so than some other firms for the pandemic. We were very fortunate that our, in, um, our company was able to go remote within days. I think for a company about at the time, 90 employees, we just had to secure about eight computers to be able to get everybody home and up and running immediately. So that was a blessing. But I, I on, on another note, it was kind of funny. Prior to that, we had already set in motion to be reaching out to our employees that weren't working in our office and trying to engage and incorporate, like how do you bring together a remote workforce, not in the sense of the, the COVID remote, remote workforce that we're dealing with now, but more so, we are an engineering company with employees in the field. So yes, COVID hit and we had to shift the way we were doing things, but we were already on that track of how do we engage our employees that work in the field with the employees in the office because that was something that we recognized the, like prior years, you know, um, when you have the company Christmas party and your field employees take the time to show up and they're like, hey, it's great to see everybody. And then the next year they come again and they're so excited to see all their coworkers. It's okay, well, how can we keep that Christmas party energy going on throughout the year? So when COVID hit, it really brought our, us home because employees were missing those water cooler talks and they were missing the way to connect with each other. And it was very important for us to find ways to keep the employees connected some of the things that we had already in motion, but like we had to accelerate, we started to use an intranet that's based off of a platform called Knowledge Architecture. And with that, the reason why we use that specific product is it works within our Dell Tech um, e ecosphere. And also we and had introduced, which is again, the timing of it was just, it was just, it was interesting. Um, we had introduced Dell Tech Talent Management. I believe we purchased it um, fourth quarter 2019. And so we were working on rolling that out. And all, all these products that we had ready to go, that we had a time frame, all of a sudden we're in this panic. Oh gosh, we've got to figure out how to keep everybody connected and um, in, in the zone. So luckily we had these tools in place and we just started expanding on them to keep the employees connected. It really was fortunate that you had them that just coincidentally or fortuitously that you had them before we, before this whole thing hit, because a lot of people, you know, comes in the middle of March and they're looking and trying to figure out how, what the next day is going to bring. You know, and the biggest challenge I believe that we did face in those early days, A, it was gray and dark where now you're being thrown to be working from home. You're not prepared for it. I don't know about you, Gary, but I didn't have, I didn't have the right clothes. I mean, I wore my pajamas out within the first couple of weeks. <laughs> Those little things you didn't think about because you know, you're so used to going to work, but who wants to put on like a suit to sit at home? And then there's, you know, and then we're like, okay, you know, in the first couple of days, we were all excited about the video calls. And now it's like, what do you mean? I got a zoom with you. Can we, can we just not? <laughs> right. And we all thought we'd be back two weeks later. So. Oh, for sure. I, I don't think that any of us thought by any stretch of our imagination that we would be sitting here 15 months later, especially when I remember at the time we were like, okay, we're going to be back in May. And then it was like, okay, it was June. And you couldn't look past those first few months because mentally none of us could handle. If you had told us in March of 2020, we would still be in our homes, March, 2021. I don't think psychologically any of us could have heard that. I, we weren't I agree prepared for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you mentioned um, uh, 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 the Dell Tech Talent Management Program. What, how, how does something like this, uh, a technological solution like this help bring your employees closer together? Well, so it's kind of ironic, right? So I keep saying that, but it really is. You wouldn't think a, a HR, 
HRS system would be something that would bring employees together because it's HR has a bad connotation in the business world. It's like, oh, I'm in trouble. I have to go to HR. Oh, they're the, they're the gate, you know, they're the rule makers. They're the ones that have to enforce everything. Well, here now we introduced a platform that made HR a friendlier in exchange. Now here we have this great platform where we're going to rate your performance. We're going to show you your career path. We're going to introduce you to mentors. We're going to give you uh, opportunity for education and learning um, different ways to engage with other employees. One of the things that I really enjoy about the platform is that we have the opportunity for someone to say, I'm an expert in, I don't know, a certain part of CAD that I wouldn't even understand. But if somebody's looking for somebody in the company that has a particular skill set, they're now able to connect with them. And this was just another platform that allowed us um, for the employees to come together. One of the things that we kind of came up with, which I cannot uh, create or uh, take credit for, somebody somewhere in one of my in my in my world introduced me to this idea. It's this think partner, and one of the things that we learned, especially with COVID. You, the water cooler talk is great, but what you don't realize that you're getting from those water cooler talks, you're gleaming information from other people. Even if it's just talking about last night's TV show that was so amazing, you're still picking up knowledge from that other party. We lost that with COVID so that the reason you're not going to pick up the phone or set up a Zoom call to say, hey, let's talk about last night's Game of Thrones episode. It You miss that organic environment. So we came up with a new way to encourage people to reach out to talk to others about skill sets that, or areas in which they have certain skill sets. Like just today, we have an employee that returns back to the company after being gone for a year. And I said, you know, we have new tools available, we have new people available, and in your new role, you're going to be using different applications. Here are the, the subject matter experts in our organization that can offer you some guidance. It might be good for you to reach out to them, introduce yourself and see what, and set up a time for you to meet with them so that they can help you within this new role. And so we've come up with creative ways to teach people or to encourage people to talk to others and engage with others, whether it be hey, what do you think of this wallpaper <laughs> for my kitchen? Even something as silly as that. But having those conversations, you pick up more than you realize. And that's something that we lost within COVID. So the long or the short, how did talent come into play with this? You couldn't, prior to us having that, we didn't have the visibility of who was in what roles and who had what knowledge that they could share. It, 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 it. To my mind, it, it takes a, does it take a certain type of employee to be, uh, to jump at this opportunity for you to encourage to, to do this? Uh, did the employees embrace this, this concept? Well, you'll be surprised. So one thing that we did this, this year for 2021, which again, it was in play, but with COVID and everything, everything just, you know, gets pushed back. We introduced quarterly bonuses. And with that, we are doing quarterly uh, performance metrics each month or each quarter. So the beginning of January, every employee went into talent and they set up goals. We showed them how to uh, do it. They were given some suggested goals, some suggested goals to do. And then supervisors were encouraged to reach out and work with their employees to kind of help them achieve their goals. So with this, it was kind of interesting because a lot of supervisors took the opportunity to start engaging with their team members in a different manner that they had done before. And then also employees were able to identify areas that they were, they, it gave them a platform to be vocal and say, I'm really interested in learning about plants. Is there anybody in the company that could, you know, that's interested in talking to me about plants? So when we were reviewing the goals and supervisors were engaged and you know, people were then be able to say, you know, who would be a great person for you to connect with would be this guy over here. And then it brought employees together in a way that you wouldn't really think would work. And it's interesting. So to answer your question, it doesn't take a certain type of employee. It just, it was really, in, it was really in surprising for us to see the level of engagement we got from the employees that we received it from. We are a multi-generational company and some of the more senior employees who are at the end of their career were like, you wouldn't think they would be so, who, who, so encouraged to do their goals, 
they were right up there with some of the top performers in doing their goals. And it was really great to see some of the, the younger generation was really excited to be able to um, give, find a platform to say, this is what I'm trying to, to do with my career. Can someone help me? Can some, is there someone in the company that can guide me to get me where I want to go? And then we were starting to able to connect the dots. Now the program's great. It is in its infancy. We're definitely building it out and we're learning how to expand it to, for the needs of the organization, but there's been an excitement like that we haven't seen. It's like the Christmas party all over again. They're fighting like, oh, and then we also, we made it, we incentivized it, right? So we said, if you do this, we're going to give you um, a percentage of your salary and it's guaranteed if you just do these basic things. And employees are really, really engaged. And it's great to see because one of the employees put in there, I feel disconnected. I don't feel like I can, I don't know how to talk to other people. So we reached out to him when we saw that and we said, what can we do to help you? And so it's, it's giving people the platform to be heard is what we found is the most beneficial. That sounds great. It's, uh, I mean, it, it, for, for all of these people all over the country who are spending all their time in their houses, just that the, the opportunity to connect with others is, is, is golden. Um, what, what about the, uh, uh, administration of the program. I mean, how did, did, you, did you have to uh, ramp up something significant or is it fairly uh, self, does it run on its own? Well, so as um, anybody that's familiar with Dell Tech products, they're great, but they're customizable to your organization. So Dell Tech is amazing in providing the foundation to allow us to build our program for our organization. So they gave us a, we had a dedicated trainer who was amazing, Wendy, who walked us through every portion of the system and has been available all every step along the way as we customized it specifically for our organization. The best part of it is the employees had to write their own goals. So once Wendy helped us establish the platform and we could show them how to do it, the rest was out of our hands because right. the employees then had to go do the legwork themselves. So it isn't as daunting as it sounds. Um, it was, it, it's, it's a great product. Um, we, we were able to get it set up the way that we needed it set up for our organization, which was good because what works for us may not work for somebody else. I would imagine you've also been able to, whether it's direct or direct result or an indirect result, gather some metrics of your firm's performance. Yes, and it's interesting. Um, this came out the other day. Employees were asking, like, can we see more? And this was an indirect result of this. Can we start seeing the data? Can so now it's it's the onus is on me. I'm also in um, on the financial side of the organization. They're asking more for their project data and it's an indirect result because now they're engaged within talent. And we also use Dell Tech Vision and they're saying, well, if talent can do this and give us this information, so Vision can do more, how do we get to see more? How do we get to learn more? And I'm just looking at them going, could you just come back to me in six months? We're trying to go to Vantage Point. We don't wanna train you on Vision and then have to take you to Vantage Point. So it's great. It's just funny because it's like, to your point, we're almost creating more work for ourselves indirectly. But it, it but I, you know, as you said earlier, a more engaged staff is a, is a, is a, is a better staff. Oh, definitely. I had a conversation with a senior leader yesterday and mentioned, oh, I've been using this report. I said, okay. And they said, well, is this the best report? I said, well, it depends on what you're trying to extract, but perhaps you should reach out to the subject matter expert on report. Oh, you know what? That's a great idea. I'm going to schedule a time with that person and we're going to work on that together. So it's encouraging people to find out is to ask the question, is this the best way to do this? And if not, is there someone in the company that could assist me in finding a better solution? And that goes back to our think partners. So it's not just the think partners doesn't have to be on the top level of just one focus. It's encouraging people to think outside of the box in general. And it's been well received. What, what um, does the staff or the, the team have any role in how you're um, configuring the, the, the technology? Have they made suggestions to, to fix this or change it or anything like that? Ironically, yes. I keep saying ironically. Um, we just started, we just did a 13-week training program um, with uh, AEC, 
uh, it was called Finding the Lost Dollars. And some of the senior leaders in our organization were involved. And one of the things that we do at the end is we meet in groups and we break up, we do goals for whole, the whole session. And at the end, we talk about what we can do. And my team came back and said, can we see what the process looks like in the system from start to finish so that we can have a better understanding and provide insight and suggestions on how to improve the process. Because one of the things that I've, I've been saying to them all along is it can always be better. It can always, in, it can always get improved and there's always room for improvement. And plus when we find something that we don't like, we can tell the people that have the power to make the change, hey, can this change and can we build something to get where we wanna go? Because think, we wouldn't be here today without engineers saying there's got to be a better way to design the roads and the bridges. Oh, right. No, completely. Yeah. I mean, that's that's engineers or tinkerers at heart. So it, Absolutely. So taking advantage of that um, knowledge base that I have homegrown in my office and saying, hey, there's got to be a better way. Just speak up. And that's just, that's what we're trying to encourage people to do, be, be more engaged. So it, now that we're a year on, or I guess we're more than a year on in, the, in this uh, working at home thing, um, did, are you able to sort of see some sort of impact that, that this technology sort of, that the, the help that the, the team is more, is closer together now than they were 13 months ago? I, honor, I, I honestly believe we're more, we have a more engaged work staff than we did at the start of this. And it might just be as, as a product of COVID, you have to have, you have to force the interactions with the weekly meetings. You have to check in with your team regularly. You can't just assume that they're doing okay. Where when you were in the office and you had your eyes on them, you just assumed they were fine because they weren't saying anything. Now we're on like a schedule of, no, there's the weekly check-ins. There's, you know, making sure everything's okay. I hadn't heard from one of the employees that sits outside of my office in a few weeks. I thought, well, that's odd. And this is just a few weeks ago. So I reached out to him. I said, is everything okay? And he said, well, sure. What's going on? I said, you've been awfully quiet. And so yeah. he, he said, oh no, I've just been busy with work. And I said, well, just checking in because those were he, the, the water cooler talk. I don't have those check-ins. I don't know how, like what's going on with people. So just having that ability, you know, we're making sure we're checking in with each other frequently. It's been good. And I hope that we are, are able to keep it up. And if not, so even push it to be that we have more formal, like, you know, coffee with a, co a colleague on a regular basis to keep the engagement up. And speaking of that, you know, looking, looking into the future, I mean, one would assume that at some point we will be allowed back in our offices, whether we all go back full time or whether there's some sort of flexible schedule. How do you see the, these, this, the, the lessons you've learned from this past year going forward? Well, I would hope that employees would be engaging or excited and engaged to be back in the office to catch up with their colleagues and perhaps take it as an opportunity to say, hey, what, how did you survive the, the, the last year? Did you do anything different or special or, you know, pick, pick their colleagues' brains and find out what made it bearable for you and share your quote unquote war story of how you survived. Because I think having that common connection opens the door up for broader conversations and you discover, it gives you something to start the conversation. And it, you discover that you probably have more in common than you realize, and it bridges a relationship that you didn't think you could have. And, and you, you see the, these very, like the, the uh, think partners and the, I guess what's, I have forgotten them, the, uh, the talent management, you see those continuing to sort of uh, grow with the firm as you go along? Absolutely. And I believe we're also going to uh, adjust the process as we continue to go. As we'll be back in person, rather than have to schedule these informal or these formal meetings weeks in advance, perhaps, you know, when somebody's working on a project, we figure out ways to make the, no the knowledge share a bit easier. And that's something that when we're back, maybe it's easier to brainstorm with people sitting around a table together versus on Zoom calls where everybody's just tired of being on a Zoom at three o'clock. <laughs> no, I know that feeling. Yeah. Well, great. I think that covers, uh, that gives a good sense of what happened over the past year. I appreciate your taking the time to talk with us. Absolutely. Thank you for the invite.
Yeah. We've been talking with uh, Florence Sterling, who's president of DB Sterling Consultants in Chicago. And you've been listening to the Engineering Influence Podcast presented by the American Council of Engineering Companies. Thanks for listening. Thank you.